Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal. Welcome to my channel. As we've started with management case studies, uh, I'm going to continue with the series and we're going to discuss a lot of more case studies related to management. Management case studies discussion focuses on two things. Number one, understanding what kind of case studies can be asked from you in the examination. And number two, how to come to the right answer by either elimination or understanding different portions from the case study by figuring out the keywords from these case studies. So without wasting any further time, let me start with the session on say case studies. If you have not gone through previous case studies, you might find it difficult to understand the way I'm going to discuss these case studies today. So I would request you, if you're a serious aspirant, to go through the case studies, uh, previous case studies that we've already discussed and then to come back to this session. The first question is, or the first case study is about James Washington, who has joined a new organization as a management, as a manager. Dorothy is his, uh, super, is his uh, subordinate, but she's been an old worker in that uh, particular branch. She's been working there for over 12 years. And uh, therefore, there is a strong leadership and ego tussle between James as well as Dorothy in that service center. The question is, is in Northview servicing, Dorothy is facing ego clashes with James leading to an unhealthy environment. As I said, they are facing ego problems because Dorothy is not able to, is not able to accept James as a leader or as her superior in the service center. Which type of leadership style should be used by James in such a situation? When there is a strong ego clash, when there is a strong ego problem by the subordinate, in that case, in order to calm him or her down, participative leadership style is the most effective because in that case, by using participative style, you are satisfying, satisfying the ego that your subordinate is uh, facing or the ego that the subordinate has. Because in this case, Dorothy has been working in the service center for the last 12 years. She knows that she's very experienced. She knows she, that she can actually handle the entire service center on her own. But despite her being so experienced and uh, so knowledgeable, the company, instead of putting her or making her the manager, has brought in an outside person who's also a fresh graduate, very young to Dorothy. And therefore, it's natural that her ego is hurt because she feels that she's more qualified when it comes to working as the manager or leading the service center as the manager. So in this case, uh, the best approach for James would be to adopt a participative style. Now, what are these four styles? Let's understand them one by one so that you're more clear about the differences between them. We have four, directive, supportive, participative, and achievement oriented. Directive is for workers who are working on amb ambiguous tasks and uh, because they don't know what is to be done, they need to be directed by the superior, by the leader. In this case, the subordinates are often uneducated or uh, they expect the leader to lead them, to tell them what is to be done. In supportive, positively affect satisfaction of subordinates working on stressful and frustrating tasks. So it is more of a psychological situation. It is used more in psychological situations where the subordinates are stressed and are working on tasks that are long, that are frustrating, require a lot of time. And therefore, it becomes important for the leader to provide them the psychological and the moral support that they need. The third one is participative, wherein ego, if ego is involved and if you're doing non-repetitive tasks, then in order to satisfy the subordinates, you need to participate with them and uh, fulfill, fulfill their egos so that they work effectively. And the last one is achievement oriented, wherein you are dealing with ambiguous and non-repetitive tasks, but the subordinates in this case are more educated and are more uh, focused upon uh, achieving something in their lives, are more focused upon learning something new. They're not just focused on the task at hand, but they're also focused on the bigger picture of growth. And therefore, the uh, leader has to provide them a vision so that they're able to achieve, they're able to fulfill those ambiguous and non-repetitive tasks more effectively. 
I hope you've understood the differences between them. They're very psychological in nature. The focus is more less on task and more on the person doing or completing the task. Please pause the video for a while and go through the entire case study. It's an important case study about Peter Gilmore, who's a manager with an insurance company. And he is guiding his subordinates and telling them what his expectations are from his immediate subordinates. If I give them something to do, I expect the same from them. It should be correctly done and on time. I cannot take time to check upon them or to see if they're doing it. That means that he does not want them to disturb him when they are on their tasks. It should be done correctly. It should be done on time. He should not have to follow up. They should not be required to come to him for guidance after the task has been provided or allocated. The question is, while evaluating the performance of employees, Mr. Gilmore is committing which type of error? Now, this is not highlighted in the keyword, but I am assuming that you've read the case study. If not, go back, read the case study again. Halo effect, central tendency error, first impression error, and similar to me error. Now, halo effect is an effect or an error wherein you tend to highlight something and miss out on the other qualities which might be bad or which might be good. So you highlight a one particular quality or one particular aspect or element of a person and assume that the entire person is based upon that one quality. Okay. Central tendency. I want you because you've already covered a lot of case studies. I started, I'll start giving you some homework, which you have to do. And it's not going to be difficult. Central tendency after this, immediately after this session, uh, go online, Google it and understand it. And then, uh, provide me the answer in the comment section below if you don't know about it. First impression error happens when you, uh, for example, you meet someone and the first impression is very good. So you assume that the person is very good. You meet someone, first impression is very bad. But after that, you see a lot of improvements, a lot of good impressions. But your first impression overpowers your idea or your uh, you know, uh, assumption about that person and it affects your behavior or your conclusion about that person. And the third is the last is similar to me error, wherein you expect the other person to be similar to you. And if he or she is not, then you assume that he or she is bad or not of, a, of such a good behavior or not committed enough. So in this question, Mr. Gilmore is committing the fourth error that is similar to me error because he's expecting that everybody is committed to the same level, not only the same level to the same level, but also committed in the same way as he has been to his boss in the organization. Every person has a different way of showing his or her commitment. Okay. Mr. Gilmore's way was different. The subordinates ways might be different. Okay. The next question is, as per Likert's management systems, which are the following type of leadership style best suits the characteristics portrayed by Peter. So which are the character, which are the leadership styles best suits the characteristics portrayed by Mr. Gilmore, exploitative, authoritative, benevolent, authoritative, consultative, and participative. Before answering this question, let's understand all these four one by one. The first one is exploitative, authoritative, which assumes that there is no trust or which says that there is no trust and confidence in subordinates, which has not happened in this case. Subordinates in return because there is no trust and confidence, so they don't feel free at all to discuss things about the job with their superior. The second one is benevolent authoritative, wherein you have trust and confidence in your subordinates, but at the same time, the subordinates do not feel very free to discuss things about the job with the superior because you are benevolent in being in, in your nature, but at the same time, you're authoritative, so you're not giving them enough power, you're not giving them enough freedom to decide what they want to do you are making decisions on their behalf. The third is consultative where you consult them, but at the same time, the decision making power lies with you. So it's, it is the decision making power which is changing. Decision making power lies with the superior, lies with the superior. Decision making lies with the superior here. Decision making is delegated in this case, democratic. Okay, so that is a major difference between the first three and the last one. So in consultative, you are consulting the subordinate. Let's say you have five employees below you. You're consulting them. You're asking them, okay, what should be done? We have this problem, but you are not 
letting them decide. You're just asking them for their inputs and then you are deciding. Therefore, there's substantial trust and confidence, but not complete confidence and trust. And the subordinates feel free to discuss things, which has not happened in the case of Mr. Gilmore, because he's specified very clearly, I don't want you to disturb me. I don't want you to coming to be coming to me. And I don't want me to be going to you in order to complete the task. And the last one is democratic, where is there is where there is complete confidence and trust. You are asking the subordinate subordinates for their inputs and you're also letting them decide. And as a result, subordinates feel completely free to discuss things about the job with their superior. So the answer to this question very clearly is benevolent authoritative because in this, the decision making number one has not been delegated. Democratic cannot be the answer. And at the same time, there is no uh, free will of the subordinates to discuss things with their superior, in this case, Mr. Gilmore. So the answer left is benevolent authoritative. So the answer to this question is B, benevolent authoritative. Okay, so this is again a chart, a diagram where uh, this four styles of management by Rensis Lickert, exploitative, authoritative, etc, etc, have been depicted in the form of a diagram. The first one is exploitative, authoritative, wherein you have a gun in your hand and you tell them, tell the subordinates what is to be done. And so they often, uh, you know, uh, are not nice to you. Then you have benevolent authoritative. Yes, you are praising them for their work, but at the same time, they're afraid of you. That's why facing on the other side. And then you have consultative, where you are consulting your subordinates, but at the same time, uh, you're not helping them or making giving them the freedom to decide. And then you have participative, where everybody wants to work and everybody is participating in the activity. The fourth case study for today is about Mary, who started taking a lot of uh, lunch breaks, whose uh, performance started going down at her work because of certain problems, and she also started drinking. So I uh, request you to pause the video for a while, go through these uh, this case, this particular slide, and then I will be moving forward. So this is the first slide, and then we have the question. In order to make Mary work, which of the following motivational approach or technique has been used by Helen? Carrot and stick, job enlargement, Herzberg's hygiene factors, job rotation. A very simple question, but at the same time, very intriguing. Hi, let's start with let's start with Herzberg's hygiene factors. Did Helen, in any scenario in the previous case, give her more money or more? any uh, uh, any kind of uh, promise to provide her more safety more security no she did not therefore hygiene factors are out job rotation did helen put mary to any other work no she did not she's been working on the same job job enlargement did uh, helen provide more work to mary in the same department of the same kind no she did not yes she did follow carrot and stick because she want, she she kept motivating Mary and she kept asking Mary what the problem was. And at the same time, she also was not afraid of punishing Mary when she was not doing well. So she threatened Mary that you will be fired if you do not uh, mend your ways and you continue with the same attitude in the workplace. So the answer is A, carrot and stick. In this way, you try and eliminate all the possible options by using some of the other logic but using logic and using uh, your knowledge depends upon how much have you read. Therefore, management case studies are purely dependent upon your knowledge and secondly, your application or the right application of knowledge. Okay, we have the fifth uh, case study here. I want you to go through this case study. The keywords have been highlighted for you. Uh, you can pause the video for a while. Let's move to the question. Jerry and Robert might still face some serious issues despite, employ despite employing like-minded people as executives in the organization. From the below statements, choose the statements that are not correct. To choose the statements that are not correct with respect to this organization. So we find out the statements that are correct and then we jump to statements that are not correct. Let's start with the third one. Groupthink strategies will work well among executives in the organization. Groupthink strategies. If you don't know what groupthink is, you probably might get confused here. 
group think strategies are a group think happens when people of the same kind let's say same gender same race same age group start working together okay therefore yes because they belong to the same race chances of group think happening are very high the organization will be deprived of cultural diversity this has been clearly specified in the case as well that cultural diversity will take a hit uh, because people from the city from another gender from other race from other culture are not welcomed in the organization for some of the other reason the second one is inter group conflicts between the top level and middle level management might take place in the organization okay this is very confusing because we're talking about inter group conflicts and the first one is about intra group conflicts and it says it will not take place in the organization due to employees from the same race and gender group so intra group conflicts will not take place in the organization due to employees from the same gender and race group so conflicts don't have anything to do uh, with race and gender conflicts do happen uh, among people of the same race uh, you're working in india you're working let's say in noida and uh, uh, there are all the people the entire staff is from noida uh, even then there will be a lot of conflicts in the groups therefore this is certainly incorrect and we have to identify the incorrect ones and the second one is inter group conflicts between top and middle level management might take place in the organization which is correct yes inter group conflicts might take place so the correct answer for us which is incorrect in this case is e one only this is the explanation you can pause the video and go through the explanation so this was all about this particular session where we talked about a lot of management case studies I am uh, successfully and very committedly revising the entire uh, current affairs with all the enrolled students through uh, the crash course that I'm running, uh, working 24/7, trying to revise everything with you and ensuring that you're well prepared for the upcoming examination. And more and more students of mine are able to clear this year's examination. All the very best. Take care. And if you want to enroll in the paid group in the crash course, you can do so. by going to the website or by using the links available in the description section below till then all the very best keep studying take care